Lightroom masking tools are way better than in Capture One. Lightroom is much more precise and faster on creating masks. Capture One doesn't provide dedicated tools for a quick sky selection. Capture One lacks the intersect masks feature. Over the past few months uh, since uh, Capture One introduced uh, the new AI masking tool, I've come across uh, hundreds of comments like this uh, on social media where people are debating which software delivers uh, the best masking performance and why you should choose one over the other. Actually, almost every week I find myself uh, answering people's DMs uh, about what they think about these uh, AI features uh, and which software I believe provides the best results. So why not make a video? This is not going to be an in-depth tutorial on how to use masks. Uh, I just want to do a practical comparison between the two and share with you my thoughts and personal experience on the AI masking tools, specifically for travel and skate photography and the box submits. Now, straight out, I want to call this out that this video is not sponsored in any shape or form. They are both really great software even if I have a soft spot for Capture One, I use both for different reasons uh, and I'm not here to convince uh, anyone to switch to Capture One or Lightroom. Hi everyone, what's going on? Welcome to my channel. I'm Andrea Liberi and I use my over 10 years of experience as a professional travel and landscape photographer to teach people photography through workshops and online courses, uh, helping them unleash their uniqueness and create the photos that best represent their vision. All right, all the considerations I'm gonna make in this video are gonna be based on four areas. Masking options, uh, selection speed, uh, performance, uh, and customizations. Both software provide uh, an array of uh, AI masking tools, and they are very different in terms of uh, functionalities. Of course, uh, AI applied to photo editing is uh, growing very fast, so it's likely to see new updates in the near future on both platforms. Now, at the time of recording this video, uh, Lightroom includes different AI and regular masking tools. Additionally, it has a very handy feature called Intersect Mask. Uh, we will check that. Uh, out in a few that allows you to create sophisticated custom masks by intersecting different local adjustment tools. Regarding Capture One, it features several powerful masking tools, and in the last quarter of 2023, it introduced its first AI toolset, which I really enjoyed. I'm going to use different images to compare both software and explore how their tools perform in different scenarios. One comment that constantly pops up is how much better Lightroom is at selecting the sky. So I'm going to start right by testing how the two software perform on selecting the sky in this image. We've got a nice uh, defined separation between the mountains uh, and the sky. Lightroom provides a dedicated one-click button sky selection function, which is very handy. Its goal uh, is to get the edges of uh, its clean so that when we make adjustments to the sky, we're not making changes to other elements like the horizon, mountains, or trees, or whatever it's uh, butting up against. So I'm going to click the sky icon. The processing is super quick. Now, as you can see, it's done a pretty good job of masking the blue sky. If we come over here on the bottom or click uh, on these uh, three dots uh, and change uh, our mask overlay mode to white or black, we have got a better representation of how accurate the selection is. But see these areas of green? The transition area is definitely not perfect and uh, requires some adjustments. So technically we don't want those areas selected because uh, those areas uh, are also going to be affected uh, when we make uh, any adjustments. The white area is where the adjustments are going to be applied. If you are somewhat familiar with masking, you should already know that white reveals and black conceals. Now, let's take a look at Capture One. Unlike Lightroom, Capture One doesn't have a dedicated sky selection function. Instead, it offers a more generic AI selection tool, which I find incredibly powerful and versatile. It allows you to hover over the various elements of your picture and you will get a preview of how the mask is going to look. Don't worry if the edges look a little bit rough because when you actually select the mask by clicking, then it will be created and then you will have that nice level of refinement. So to select the sky, we just need to grab the AI select tool and click over the sky. If I turn on grayscale masking, then you can see just how nice and more precise the mask is with a granular super fine detail. For example, let's substantially decrease the exposure. In Lightroom, we can see weird artifacts in the transitional area, whereas in Capture One, the adjustment is targeting only the sky and nothing else. So the mask is definitely cleaner. Keep in mind that this is an extreme example and we are unlikely to make such drastic exposure tweaks. Nevertheless, it's interesting to observe the differences. In this test image, we don't have a clean separation between the sky and the mountain. So 
in terms of sky selection, ideally, we don't want hard edges. I would rather prefer a sky mask with a soft transition, uh, avoiding any adjustments uh, that might look uh, too obvious. So now I'm going to select sky in Lightroom and in Capture One, I'm going to use uh, our handy AI select tool. OK, right off the bat, Capture One gives me a rather edgy mask, uh, which I don't think it's appropriate for this picture. In contrast, Lightroom selection has a more gentle and softer transitional area. Capture One, though, has a very handy tool called Refine Mask that helps uh, address this issue. What Refine Mask allows me to do is uh, to apply a different level of refinement, subtle or more pronounced to our mask. So I'm going to click Refine Mask and I'm going to increase the radius at 300. And as you can see, the transition is way much softer than the initial calculation. Another interesting thing about this tool is uh, its compounding property that allows us to smooth out the mask even further by applying the refined mask multiple times. I really love this feature and uh, it works seamlessly in combination with any other tool like the graduated filter, the radar filter or the brush. So it's really amazing. We can achieve a similar result in Lightroom, but it requires a few more steps uh, using the intersect mask option. So in my opinion, this unique feature gives a Capture One a slight edge uh, over Lightroom. Here we have a completely different scenario where the sky is divided into different portions by these uh, arches. The sky selection tool provides uh, a pretty good result. However, there is a, a part of the sky missing in this area, which can be easily fixed by using the add function. Both the add and the subtract features, when used in conjunction with any of the masking tools, allows us to customize and refine the areas affected by our edits. In this case, since we want to add this portion of the sky to the base selection, we just need to click uh, Add and choose the tool that best suits uh, the type of refinement uh, we need to apply. For example, in this case, we can use the AI Object Selection tool and paint uh, over the blue area of the sky to add it to the selection, like so. Nice. Now, let's switch to Capture One. Similarly, I'm going to use our AI Select uh, tool again. Also, in this case, the AI Selection didn't pick up the same sky area and this stuff uh, at the top of the arch. So very easily, by using the same tool, as we, we don't need to switch to a different tool, I'm going to zoom in and click and drag the box around this element, like so. And a couple more to add this selection here. Here we go. Brilliant. Like before, if you want to smooth out the selection a little bit, you can use the Refine Mask tool and apply a touch of refinement to your liking. Once again, I find the efficiency of the AI Select tool in Capture One way better. As we have seen so far, these AI Selection tools are not always perfect. Most of the time, they require a few little tweaks. So in regards to mask refinements, I would like to show you another example. Let's try the AI subject selection feature on this image on both software. The select subject tool in both Capture One and Lightroom is a powerful time saver compared to the manual masking and selection method we use to employ. The subject is kind of irrelevant to the AI model. It doesn't care if it's a person, a rock or a tree. And this is true for both software. But if you have used it, uh, you have probably noticed uh, it doesn't work every single time and it's not uh, always perfect. If we zoom in at 100% and activate the grayscale overlay, we can see that while the selections are very similar, there are discrepancies here in the highlights of the Jeep and the deployable steps uh, where the selection is not quite good. So let's try to refine the mask and clean up the area here on the deployable steps. I'm going to start with Capture One. First, I want to remove uh, these selections uh, by using the AI Eraser tool. So I'm going to click and drag like so, and it's easily cleaned up. Now I'm going to select the AI Select tool and I'm going to use the same approach uh, of boxing the area we want to include uh, in the mask like that. The selection is pretty good with a nice level of refinement and the process was super quick. Now let's do the same thing in Lightroom. Here we need to use the Add and Subtract buttons to include or exclude different elements from the selection. So I'm going to click on Subtract and select the Objects tool. Then I'm going to click and drag a box over this section here and we have cleaned it up a little bit. 
I'm going to click on subtract again and use the brush tool to remove these areas here. Okay, now we need to add uh, the deployable steps. So I'm going to click on add and we need to select objects. Let's start by selecting the object in its entirety to see if Lightroom is able to figure it out by itself. Nope. All right. We probably need to work in a smaller incremental steps. So I'm going to start by selecting this bottom part, like so. That's great. Now let's click again on Subtract. Objects and select this object there. And let's do the same thing for the others, like that. And here we are. As you can see, the selection is absolutely fine, but the process is very tedious and time consuming, requiring multiple back and forth clicks on add or subtract, and then selecting the tool and then applying the selection. So it's very time consuming. The background select tool works in the same fashion as the subject select tool with the results that are pretty similar to what I just showed you. Overall, I find the process in Capture One to be more pleasing and super slick. By the way, if you wanted to improve your photography and editing skills, uh, you can join me in one of my photography workshops in beautiful locations. So you can look uh, in the video description for the link to the workshops page uh, and get more information there. And uh, I'd love to have you join us. With the next example, I want to raise the bar and test both software on more complex selections. Selecting the sky in this image might seem like a simple task, but let me show you why it's not. As before, I'm going to choose our sky selection tool in Lightroom. The process is super quick. Now, as you can see, we have got a decent result. Let me switch for a sec the overlay mode to white on black. You will notice some areas are missing here in the sky, and the transitional area requires some extra tweaks. Let's try refining it a bit uh, using other tools we have uh, in Lightroom. Okay, what can we do? Well, we have several options. Uh, one is to use the subtract uh, subject feature, hoping uh, Lightroom will recognize the mountains. Let's give it a try. Mm, not quite. So let's see if we have more success using the objects brush tool and painting in the missing parts of the sky. Yeah, this is definitely the more appropriate tool for this task. Now let's do the same thing to subtract the pics. Yeah, nice, much better. Let's switch to uh, grayscale mode. And as you can see, we have got a pretty nice sky selection. However, did you notice how much time the entire process takes? A lot. Let's replicate the same test in Capture One. I'm gonna use the AI Select tool to click on the sky right here. Okay, take a look at the result. It's pretty amazing. Now, let's examine the mask in more detail. While some small areas are not selected, with just one click, we have achieved a 99% accurate sky selection. With a few more clicks using the AI Select and the AI Eraser tool, we can easily refine the selection by removing the tiny areas of the mountain and adding in uh, the missing parts of the sky. I think I really enjoy in the Capture One's AI Select tool is that it can be quickly toggled with the AI Eraser tool by holding down the Alt Option key, making the process so fast. In Lightroom, however, we have to deal with two separate icons that function just as effectively, but they make the process a bit more clunky. Now, I want to show you another very interesting example. Let's say I want uh, to select all the red cabins in this image. How can I use the AI tools uh, to get uh, the quickest results? I want to start with Lightroom, and uh, I think the most appropriate tool for this task is uh, the Object Select tool. So I'm going to choose the Object Selection tool, and I'm going to start boxing each single cabin. I'm going to speed up the video a little bit, but as you can see, the process is quite tedious since uh, I have to go back and forth to click uh, the Add button and then make the selection, click the Add button again and make another selection, and so on and so forth. Well, Lightroom performs quite nicely on selecting all the different cabins, but the problem here is that the process of clicking the Add button and making the selection so many times is exhausting. 
and the mask panel is now very crowded with tons of layers. I wasn't able to figure out any sort of keyboard shortcut to make the process less time consuming. Please let me know in the comments uh, if I'm missing something or uh, if you know a quicker method to do the same thing. Now, replicating the same thing in Capture One, the process is incredibly smooth and straightforward. All the different masks are absolutely perfect, cleaner, and the entire selection just takes a fraction of the time it takes in Lightroom. I love this tool so much, it makes life so much easier. Lightroom has a pretty unique feature, unfortunately Capture One doesn't offer it yet. The Intersect Mask feature. This tool allows you to create a single mask by combining two or more existing masks. That means that any adjustments uh, you do will only be applied uh, on the areas where those masks overlap. Let's make an example. I want to select the sky in this image and uh, increase the contrast and darken it uh, a little bit. But I want to apply the effect with a decreasing intensity from top to bottom. As you can see, the selection is going to be more complex uh, in this case uh, since uh, we have to deal with this uh, tree trunk and branches. So let's start by selecting the sky with the sky selection tool like that. The mask created is uh, pretty good, but I want to clean it up uh, a little bit by filtering out the tree trunk uh, and those branches. I'm going to choose the little three dots uh, and I'm going to intersect the mask with the luminance mask that allows us to remove uh, the shadows uh, or the highlights uh, from the adjustment. If I take the left hand side, I'm going to progressively remove the shadows from our sky selection and I can decide where to stop based on the results I want to achieve. Let me apply some exposure and contrast adjustments so we can appreciate the difference. The adjustment is too strong in this area, so what we need to do is to create a linear gradient to soften the intensity. I'm just going to draw my linear gradient over the top to soften the transition down onto the horizon line, like that. And if you turn on the overlay mask for that, you will see that we have now made a gradient selection inside of our initial sky selection. And that's really nice. Another powerful thing uh, is that uh, I can have the gradient uh, on a bit of an angle because we do have this light coming here. And I don't want to darken that down. I actually don't want to affect that too much. I still want that light coming in. But I still want that soft transition on the horizon line there. Now you can see we have a much better transition. This level of intersection is not possible uh, in Capture One. The only type of intersection we can actually make uh, is using the Luma Range feature, which works very similarly to the Luminance Range tool in Lightroom. Okay, let's do the same process in Capture One. I'm gonna select the sky with our AI Select tool. And in this case, the selection uh, is not as good as in Lightroom. We have some missing parts around the branches, uh, but there is a workaround. I can use the brush tool to paint in these areas uh, like so. Don't worry for a second about the branches. Let's apply some basic adjustments such as uh, exposure, contrast uh, and level, for example. Then we are going to click on Luma Range and from here we can start filtering out the shadows like that. Now we have a great selection of the sky. The only remaining step is to feather the effect on the horizon to make it less obvious and more natural. The only thing we can do is to use the eraser brush tool with a hardness to zero, so super soft, and a low flow to remove the adjustment incrementally. Like that. The result is quite similar, but there is another drawback. While in Lightroom we can easily go back and forth to any intersection at any time and modify it in Capture One, except for the Luma Ranger, any other adjustment is uh, destructive uh, and baked into the level mask. So this approach is still fine, but it's not very versatile and practical. All right, what's your experience with the two software? Do you have uh, any preference? Let me know in the comments. I'm really curious to hear what you think. As always, thanks so much for watching and I see you in the next video. Ciao.